So we're at the point in U.S. history where the nation finally divides into two countries for, for a short period of time dur during the Civil War. Um, one of the events that really led to this division was when radical extremist abolitionist John Brown um, did an attack on Harper's Ferry, Virginia. He found an arsenal there that was poorly guarded. An arsenal is a collection of weapons for the military. He hoped to steal those weapons and give them to slaves and lead a rebellion. Uh, he was able to successfully take over the arsenal. However, when he went to, made the call out um, to get slaves to take the weapons so they could start the rebellion, uh, no one came. Um, a train that was passing through town uh, found out what was happening and took the news up to Baltimore. And very quickly the next morning, the U.S. Uh, Army, led by Robert E. Lee, uh, descended on Harper's Ferry, where they captured John Brown and killed uh, most of his men. Um, there was a shootout at the arsenal. This is very, very um, intense fighting, and it was a, a controversial moment. Um, Brown was put on trial, and, and Brown made the trial about slavery. Uh, he argued for slavery. He stayed sane and under control the whole time. Uh, he did not apologize for what he did. Um, the trial was closely watched by everyone. Um, in the end, he was hung for treason, um, but that did not appease the Southerners. They felt like they were being attacked, and there would be more attacks to come. Uh, there's John Brown on his, right here on the way to the gallows um, for his... Um, attack on Harper's Ferry, which was considered to be treason. John Brown was a radical abolitionist in many ways. Uh, he also did the Potawatomi Creek Massacre um, out in Kansas, where he uh, killed five people in the middle of the night who were pro-slavery. Uh, nothing divided the country more quickly than when President Abraham Lincoln um, won the election of 1860. Lincoln's fast rise to power started in the Lincoln-Douglas debates, where he lost a uh, Senate seat in Illinois in 1858. However, he was thought, seen as being so wise and, um, you know, capable of leadership that he quickly became the Republican's top candidate for president in 1860. In the election of 1860 in the campaign, uh, Lincoln did not bother to even get, step foot in the South um, to in, in explain his ideas. Instead, he just campaigned in the North, and in the North, um, there were enough votes for him to get the presidency as he swept through the North. Um, he won. Um, Buchanan and Stephen Douglas lost. Um, and he got no votes in the South, but he got a, much of the Northern vote, and that was enough to win because the North had a much higher population than the South. Um, Lincoln um, early on said he did, just wanted to stop the spread of slavery. He was not interested in taking slaves away from the Southerners. He was doing this to try to hold the country together. The South did not believe him, did not trust him, um, and so they say that they were going to consider leaving the country, seceding or leaving the country. Uh, Lincoln made it clear um, that that would not be acceptable, that these states need to stay in the United States and um, be a part of what they committed to in the beginning. Lincoln, extremely popular North. Look at all the people that showed up for his inauguration. Um, in the end, the South decided to secede. Many of the southern states decided to secede. Um, they said they had states' rights. They had the right to, because they joined the Union um, voluntarily uh, back in the beginning, that they had the right to leave the country at any time as well, and they had their own sovereignty to make their own decisions and do what they want. Um, South Carolina, who had been talking about this since the nullification crisis in the 1830s, was the first to leave, and then uh, very shortly thereafter, um, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, Louisiana, and Texas will uh, join them, and then eventually Arkansas, North Carolina, and Virginia uh, will join them as well um, to form the Confederate States of America, a new country. At least in their mind, it was a new country. Um, so looking at the divide here, this is the Confederate States down here. Uh, the blue is the United, what's left of the United States. Also the black are territories that belong to the United States. Um, in the middle, are these are border states, Missouri, Kentucky, uh, Maryland, and Delaware. They will not commit to either side. They did not join the Confederacy, but they also um, did not commit to the United States either. Um, Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, Delaware all continued to have slavery. West Virginia broke away from Virginia because they did not want to have slavery more, but they were not a state yet. Um, so that's how the country is shaping up. And the Confederacy makes Jefferson Davis their president. One of the big questions here, as I go back, um, the United States had built um, 
many forts and ports and different pieces of infrastructure and spent a lot of money um, building these things in the South over the years. And because they paid for it, the United States says that property still belongs to us. The Confederates said, no, that's part of our country now, and it belongs to, you know, belongs to the Confederacy. This was a big argument point in the beginning of the war and will actually lead to the first shots being fired at Fort Sumter in South Carolina. Um, Lincoln did everything he could to try to keep the country together. He tried to uh, be firm but passive, prevent the shots from being fired. He hoped the Southerners would, um, he would allow them to kind of have their moment where they're talking about succession. He hoped that over time they would just simply kind of fade back into uh, the United States and rejoin the United States. Um, however, that's not going to happen. There's Jefferson Davis, the, the president of the Confederacy. And there he is, uh, the scene when he was being sworn to office in Montgomery, Alabama. So uh, the nation is ready for war. Um, the divide is not going to be able to be fixed. And that's where we're at in American history now.